Good morning and welcome to OldStMary's.com, a ministry of Old St. Mary's Parish in the South Loop of Chicago, where today on this Monday, September 30th, we remember the memorial of Saints Andrew Kim Tegon, who was a priest, and Paul Chong Ha Sang, and their companion martyrs of Korea. The blood of the holy martyrs was poured out for Christ upon the earth Therefore, they have gained everlasting rewards. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, as we gather on this feast day when we remember the Korean martyrs, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and our need for God's mercy so that we can triumph over persecution as well. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, you have been pleased to increase your adopted children in all the world, and who made the blood of the martyrs, St. Andrew Kim Tegon, and his companions, a most fruitful seed of Christians. Grant that we may be defended by their help and profit always from their example. We ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the beginning of the book of Ezra. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me. And he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Therefore, whoever among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. Let everyone who has survived, in whatever place he may have dwelt, be assisted by the people of that place, with silver, gold, goods and cattle, together with free will offerings for the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. Then the family heads of Judah and Benjamin, and the priests and Levites, everyone that is, whom God has inspired to do so, prepared to go up to build the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. All their neighbors gave them help in every way, and with silver, gold, goods, and cattle, and with many precious gifts, besides all their free will offerings. The word of the Lord. The Lord has done marvelous marvels for us. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. 
Then our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongues with rejoicing. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, so we are glad indeed. The Lord has done for us. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those that sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. The Lord has done for us. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. Alleluia, alleluia. Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the crowd, No one who lights a lamp conceals it with a vessel or sets it under a bed. Rather, they place it on a lampstand so that those who enter may see the light. For there is nothing hidden that will not become visible, and nothing secret that will not be known and come to light. Take care, then, how you hear. To anyone who has, more will be given, and from the one who has not, even what they seem to have will be taken away. The Gospel of the Lord. Okay, so I have one big question, and I'm going to put the first graders on the spot. Let's see how we do with this. Here's the question, because the question connects the readings today with the feast day we celebrate with the Korean martyrs. And so the question is this, how do you build a church? I might have gotten a stumper in there. Ooh, way in the back. If someone can translate. You can dream it, and then you can build it. Okay? How do you build it then? I mean, all of us here can, can dream and build right here. What, what's, what's the next thing you need? Okay, right in front with the red, with the red mask. Then you can then you can pray to Jesus and God and Mary. Paint Jesus and God and Mary. Okay. Okay, but we need something even before that though. I, I agree that comes right up here. Bread? Brick. Actually something even before that. Something that in all the readings today they talked about how to do it. And in the feast day today, they talked about how to do it. So the answer is this. You need people. If you want to build a church, you got to have people. And, of course, I'm not just talking about a brick and mortar building. I'm talking about the church that is the church, the, the big church. So when you heard the first reading today, we're, we're starting a book that you don't hear about a lot. It's the book of Ezra. And the book of Ezra is all about, well, what happened is the Israelites were captured and they were taken away to Persia. And finally, a new king comes in Persia who's going to send them back to Israel. 
and going to allow them to start building the temple. So the temple is kind of like their church in Jerusalem. So he's sending them back, and, and all we're going to hear about in the book of Ezra is the community that comes together to bring the temple back so that the community has a place to worship. Okay. We don't hear from Ezra very often, but when we do a dedication of a church, it is the book of Ezra that's usually the first reading. And then we get into the gospel, and what Jesus says is, if you're going to be a person who says who Christ is and who God is, you have to be a light to the world. Now, I'm, I'm betting that the first graders thought, when we asked the question in the gospel, no one takes a light. No one takes, especially, a lit candle and puts a tub over it, right? Because if you do that, you can't see the candle, right? And the candle will probably go out, and you won't see it. And who of you would ever put a lit candle under your bed, or any of you? You know, so, so none of that makes sense. None of that makes sense because the purpose of a light is to be seen or to give light to others. And that's what the church is meant to be. It's meant to be a light. It's meant to be seen and to give light to others and give hope to others. Now we get to the Korean martyrs. Now, first graders, do you know what martyrdom, do you know what it means to be a martyr? Uh, it, it means... That, that you die for your faith. You don't necessarily want to die, but you believe in your faith and you have so much light that, that, uh, that you can't help proclaiming it. And the Korean martyrs, the Korean church is a wonderful example of one of the modern churches in our world because the Korean church did not start with priests and missionaries showing up and telling them everything they needed to do. There was one or two priests that made their way there, and the people got it. They caught fire. It wasn't just one light. It was hundreds of lights. And it was back in the 1500s when, when uh, if you did something that the state didn't want you to do, you know, you got persecuted, you got killed, you got... And the Korean church started with lay people catching fire with the faith, sharing it with each other, and it has done nothing but grow ever since. The martyrs we have today, St. Andrew and St. Paul. St. Andrew was the first native Korean who was ordained a priest, and he died fairly quickly. He was, they took his head off. They took his head, not a good way to go. And Paul, Paul, his father was actually martyred for the church as well. So to have your father and your son both, he was uh, at 43 years old, a seminarian. He was getting ready to be ordained a priest. He was a catechist. He was a teacher of the faith. And he was killed. And along with them, 104 other Koreans at that time. Over the grand uh, length of things, there have been like, 10,000 Koreans who have been killed for their faith. The testimony to the church itself in Korea, though, is that the blood of the martyrs becomes the seeds of faith. And it is a reminder that that's why the Korean church now is in the millions of Catholics. And not only that, but the Korean church of the South is what supports the hidden Korean church of the North so that faith may be lived in all ways and in all areas. So the light is not hidden for long. Eventually, we will see out of the North Korean church the understanding light of faith that continues to grow there. And let us be aware that even when we can't always see it, Jesus is with us helping to tell the story of the faith and how that faith can change the world and bring light and life to the world. So that's how we build the church. It's about you, and you, and you, and you, and all of you out there. It's about the people who come together and understand Jesus and then share it with others. Trusting in our faith, let us raise our prayers to this God who loves us. 
We pray for the church throughout the world, that the whole church will be inspired by the example of martyrs and especially the example of the Korean church. We pray to the Lord. We pray that the world itself will be open to self-correction and open to understanding how it can improve the lives of all people. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all of those who are sick or hurting in any way. We pray that the pandemic will be overcome. We pray for cures for cancer and all other diseases. And for all those who are sick as well, we pray to the Lord. We pray that our own parish will continue to grow in understanding of faith and love and be able to share it ever better. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all the people we've been asked to pray for. The particular intention we're asked to pray for at this Mass is for Frank Stone. We pray to the Lord. And for all the prayers that we have in hold, all the prayers that are held and voiced by our people who are joining us online, let's pause to consider again what those may be. For all of these prayers, we pray to the Lord. Gracious God, accept us in the prayers we place before you through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer, fruit of earth, work of human hands, it will become the bread of life. Amen. And by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness, we have received this wine we offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Almighty God, look with favor on the offerings of your people, and through the intercession of the blessed martyrs, grant that we ourselves may become a sacrifice acceptable to you for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy, you give ardor to their faith, and, in, and to their endurance, you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. And therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the heart. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, we pray, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saints Andrew and Paul and their companion, Korean martyrs, and all the martyrs and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let's pray in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. As we continue to build church, let us share Christ's peace with one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished with the food of the valiant, as we celebrate the blessed martyrs, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that clinging faithfully to Christ, we may labor in the church for the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go and share the gospel and build the church today.